After a hard day of riding, you come home and you want to stow your gear in the attic where it belongs. Let me show you just how easy this can be. Or when it's time to get your boxes of Christmas decorations down, do you want to carry the boxes down the ladder? There you go. No dangerous trip down that ladder. Your decorating partner's point of view? While designing this, I first looked at the internet. Who else has built one of these? It seems several other people have built it, but they all involved a series of four different cables coming up from your platform. And those cables ran through a series of complex pulleys and guides. Although it looked totally cool and was well thought out, I just don't have the room for that. So I had to start this design out from scratch. The main components of this dumbwaiter are the elevator platform, intermediate chain connecting it up to a thick rope. Then the rope passes through a large pulley. We also have a tie-off for the rope, a rope storage area, and two dog leashes. More on that later. Of course, since we're talking about moving objects above people's heads, there's going to be plenty of safety features. Safety rails to prevent you from falling through the hole when it's open. High visibility, high contrast paint in the ceiling to let you know when that hole is open. When the platform's not in use, safety T-bars will lock it into place. This will prevent any accidental lowering of this platform for any reason. Mark out a stay clear area below the platform. I don't know, have I ever mentioned how useful vinyl tape is? And finally, weight tested, four times heavier than the heaviest load that I will transport with this platform. Let's get started building this. Since we're going to be walking around in the attic, the first danger I decided to address was all these nasty roofing nails sticking through the plywood. They'll make very short work of your head if you hit them. First thing I did was remove anything remotely flammable in the area. Then hang plastic up to contain any sparks you're going to cause. Now you can safely cut all those nails with a metal cutter. Clean up all the metal cutting debris with a shop vac. In an abundance of caution, I also hung out up there for a couple hours to ensure no long-lived spark started a fire. Finally, we can make a hole in the ceiling. The hole will be the width of my rafters and long enough to take my motorcycle riding bag. Using a sawzall, I start out by cutting both ends of the hole. This is so I can locate where I'm cutting from down below. Install a couple temporary boards below where you're cutting to keep the sheetrock from falling out. Then go back upstairs and finish cutting. Clean up the sheetrock with a sheetrock finishing tool. Congratulations, you now have a big hole in your ceiling. Let's build a platform. It'll be made out of standard 2x4 construction with a piece of plywood attached to it. I use three 3-inch three wood screws on each corner. Here's an interesting little factoid about woodworking screws. Notice the thread is only on this end of the screw. That's because you don't want any threads in the first piece of wood. The clean shaft in the first piece of wood and the threads in the second piece allows the first piece of wood to be pulled into the second. If both pieces of wood had thread in them, the threads would be fighting each other and wouldn't allow you to cinch up the wood. The platform should fit snugly into your hole, but leave enough room to allow for some 14 gauge steel on all four sides. Next step, let's install some eye bolts. They're just shy of six inches long. They have machine threads instead of wood threads. A nut and washer is much more reliable than wood threads, especially long term. Here's the eye bolt part numbers. The eye bolts will be located on the long side of your platform in each of your four corners. You want them to be exactly the same distance in, as well as centered in the 2x4. To install, start by removing the plywood off the bottom of the platform. Drill your pilot hole.
The nut and washer will be countersunk, so drill a larger hole to accommodate both of them. Now expand your pilot hole to be large enough for your eye bolt. You can now assemble. Then reinstall the plywood on the bottom. Remember the sheetrock you cut out? It served many purposes. One of them was actually fireproofing. A wood platform wouldn't last very long if a fire broke out in your garage. Install that sheetrock that you cut out onto the bottom of the platform. You'll notice that when you pull the platform into place, you'll have uninterrupted sheetrock protecting your ceiling. Okay, we'll move away from woodworking and move into the world of metalworking. What we're going to do here is line the hole in the ceiling sheetrock with steel. It'll serve two purposes. One, protect that sheetrock when the platform's coming up and down. And number two, give me a place to attach my safety pins and my guides. I use some rather hefty 14 gauge steel. This cutout is the two ends, and these two are for the long sides of the hole. The steel will cover the majority of the 2x4s in the ceiling, with the 1 inch layover covering the sheetrock. Now, I don't have tools that will allow me to bend 14 gauge steel, but by making a series of cuts, I can use my homemade sheet metal bender to a couple inches bend anyway. The remaining uncut steel on the corner is plenty strong enough to accomplish everything I needed to do. Okay, let's start cutting. First, I cut the slots for my corner bend. The tool I'm using here is a plasma cutter. Once that's done, I cut out the entire protective siding. Break out your metal bender. Then realize there's a little bit of a problem here. The part to be bent is too big. Easy fix for that though. Let's just cut it in half. We can weld it back together later. For the weld repair, start with some tack welds. Then to prevent heat warping the steel, Weld from both directions. Clean it up with a flap disc. Now we need to drill some countersunk holes so we can mount this thing up in the ceiling. That unused hole that you see temporarily held my steel into place during construction. I wanted my final screw to be in fresh wood when I was all done. To make the countersunk hole, first you drill the hole. Next, you hit it with the countersinking bit. Okay, let's put in some safety T-bars. In case you all are wondering, where's the sheetrock on my platform? To prevent damaging it, I left it off until the very end. The mount to hold the T-bar will be square tubing. Do this three more times. I made the T-bar out of standard round stock. <laughs> Operation of these latches is extremely simple. Since the attach points are welded to the metal that's screwed into the wood, they'll hold any load I can put on them. Next, let's take a look at our guides. They're simply angled steel strips that will capture a slightly swinging platform, then guide it gently into place. Unfortunately, I lost the video footage showing how I installed these guides, but I can show you how they work. Protect your steel on both sides with high visibility paint. The only time you'll see the yellow is when the platform's down, and that helps remind you don't step in the hole. Let's figure out how we're going to make this platform move. First, mark the exact center of your platform. 
Then use a plumb bob to transfer that center up to your ceiling. This is where you will mount the support for your pulley. In my final version, I got rid of all this extra mounting hardware on the pulley. It was unnecessary. I just put it directly on the support rod. Now I can start doing my practice lifts. To make a temporary platform attach point, I ran two identical length pieces of chain from opposite corners. Then hooked the rope in the middle. The first test went about as poorly as I expected it to. It quickly became clear I need some way for this platform to straighten itself out. To that end, let me introduce you to the retractable dog leash. Using this nifty double-sided Velcro, you can mount these leashes up on the ceiling. First, I hooked one leash to one corner. The tension of the leash eventually straightened the platform out. Then I tried two leashes on opposite corners. I was surprised at how well that worked. An interesting fact I discovered during my experimentation is if I hooked up the leashes but didn't move the platform, even with tension on the leashes, it would not straighten the platform out. The platform has to be moving for this to work. Finally, to test the theory that more is better, I tried three and four leashes. The straightening of the platform actually seemed to get worse. So, I dropped back down to two leashes on opposite corners. Now that my lifting technique has been decided on, I temporarily wired in longer chains on each of the eye bolts. Now my attach point's way up here. This should make room for me to have cargo on my platform. But somehow I need to keep the chain spread at this location here. My first try, I welded some hooks on some steel rods I have from some IKEA furniture I got rid of. I then used those rods as spacers to hold the chain apart. Now it's time for the weight test. I just started applying weight until something collapsed or broke. And the item that failed was the poor quality steel that IKEA uses in their furniture. It just folded up like a wet noodle. Lesson has been learned, no salvaging IKEA steel. Let's address this little issue here. We'll break out the MIG welder and build this to replace it. It takes an extreme amount of pressure to bend angle steel. So welding up a square is very easy and quick. I then install pins sticking onto each of the four corners. The purpose of these pins is to go into the chain and hold this support structure in place. To make it much more stronger, I'm installing corner to corner cross bracing. Watch how easy these pins make it to install this support bracket. Hang in there, we're almost done. During the experimentation phase, I had simply used wire to attach my chain. This is because I made several changes along the way. But now that we've reached the end of the project, we can replace the temporary wire with a permanent chain link. I cut apart, then bent into a nice round shape a link of extra chain I had laying around. Installed it onto the eye hook, then carefully welded it to make it a solid link. Here's a major upgrade I decided during the project not to do. You can see I used a heavy rope and a snatch block pulley to make this work. My original intent was this was temporary. I was going to replace all of this with a winch that I bought at Harbor Freight. But after reading about the horrible duty cycle this winch has and all of the reviews that talked about how unreliable this winch was, I've decided to stick with the tried and true and easy to use snatch block. I will, however, replace this 2x2 support that it's mounted on. Being exposed to the attic heat, it will weaken. So I put a nice metal support up there instead. Since the rope is now my preferred method of using this dumb waiter, let me share a few more details involving the rope. The excess rope is stored in a big loop on a rafter. The loop is formed around two of these 3.5 inch tarp hooks. And the rope tie-off point is a 6-inch rope cleat.
Well, thanks for watching.